Welcome to Biblical Genetics. I'm your host, Dr. C. I'm coming at you today from the banks of the Nanahel River in North Carolina. I love this place. Now, the reason I chose this location is because I'm actually standing in front of a, what we'll call a bottleneck. It's a place in the river where the river gets really narrow and really fast. This is why whitewater rafting happens here and kayakers come here because the water is really fast. Now upstream, there'll be some slow portions in the river where there's wide and deep and downstream, there's definitely some lakes where if you're in a lake, you don't even know that you're floating in a river. It's so slow, but here everything changes. Here things are fast. Imagine a human population is very large and it suddenly is contracted to a very small group of people. And it lasts that way for a little while, for a long time maybe, and then it grows again to a new population. That's called a bottleneck. And it's during that narrow part where all the interesting things happen. Interesting from genetic standpoint, because bottlenecks are chaotic. Things happen like crazy. Things happen fast. Now I want to use that as a platform to discuss a couple of questions that I get often. One of them is, um, deals with Adam and Eve, and, and it goes like this. If all of humans came from just Adam and Eve, how could we have survived the bottleneck? Wouldn't we have gone extinct as everyone is marrying their brother and their sister and their cousin? I mean, that's bad. You're not supposed to marry people closely related to you. So let's unpack that. In this idea of Adam and Eve, we have a one generation bottleneck. We have God creating Adam and Eve from scratch, and they go on to create all the people in the world today. Right, is that possible? Would we have gone extinct? Mm. Actually, yes, it's possible. And no, we wouldn't have gone extinct. Let me, let me explain why. First of all, we're not talking about an evolutionary bottleneck where we have an earlier population that's already loaded with a lot of mutations. We have God creating Adam and Eve from scratch with no mutations, nothing bad in their genomes. Second, we don't have a, bo uh, a bottleneck that lasts for a very long period of time, which is generally disastrous for a species. Instead, we have Adam and Eve uh, having lots of children and the population grows very quickly. So those two factors there mean this is not an evolutionary bottleneck. It's not a giant problem. We're not gonna go extinct if we start from Adam and Eve. Okay, but there's a lot of genetic diversity amongst people today. Where did that all come from? Well, we can answer that in several ways too. First of all, most of the genetic diversity found in people across the world is literally found in people across the world. There are a few genes found in Africa only and, or in Europe only, but never in 100% of Europeans and never in 100% of Africans. Oh, and there's about uh, maybe 10 million variants that we found across the world. Now, think about this. You, your two genomes you got from your mother and your father, they disagree with one another in about three million places. So in about three million places, and if you look at one chromosome, oh, here's a place where you got this letter from mom, but a different letter from dad. About three million O's in you, which means you carry about one third of the world's genetic diversity. But also, these common variants that are found across the world don't cause disease. So the evolutionists would say, oh, these are mutations that happened and natural selection has had enough time to weed out the bad mutations so the common mutations aren't bad for us. They're, they're neutral or maybe sometimes, maybe they're positive for us. Well, I have another idea. What if God engineered into Adam about 10 million genetic variants that weren't bad? So now all of a sudden we're talking about this Adam and Eve scenario. We've got Adam with a little bit more genetic diversity found than found in a single person today, but not an extreme amount and his genetic diversity goes on to give rise to all the genetic diversity in the world today. We don't need mutation to explain it. We just need God engineering it into Adam and Eve. Cool. So is the Adam and Eve model a problem? No, it's not. In fact, we can explain people with Adam and Eve without needing millions of years, without needing common ancestry with, with chimpanzees, without natural selection, having to engineer things. We just have have to have God put things into Adam and Eve and we start from there. Okay, but there's another bottleneck and that is at the flood, the entire world population was reduced to only eight people. Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their three wives. Ooh, eight people, that doesn't sound like a lot. 
That sounds like a giant bottleneck. That sounds like a big problem. That sounds like we're going to go extinct as all of Noah's grandchildren start marrying each other and the great grandchildren marry each other. And isn't this a massive problem? Well, let's talk about it. First of all, we've only had about 1600 years from creation to the flood. That's not a lot of time for mutations to accumulate. So we would assume that the population doesn't have the mutation load that the modern population has. If you took one family today and killed off all the rest of the people in the world and say, okay, family, you're gonna become the ancestors of all the future people, that would be a problem because of the mutation load. It wasn't nearly as big a problem back then. But wouldn't we have lost all the genetic diversity that was in the world if we reduced the world population down to only a few people? And the answer to that is it depends. It depends on how many people and how closely related they are. If you took those eight people and the worst case scenario, let's say that the three daughters-in-law of Noah are actually daughters of Noah. Yeah, let's do that. They would probably capture about 50% of the genetic diversity in the world before the flood. Oh, so to get the 10 million common variants we see today, we'd have to have Adam and Eve have about 20 million common variants and we can lose about half. Oh, that's not that big a deal, okay. But if the three daughters-in-law aren't closer related, they could have captured 80% up to 90% of the genetic diversity found in the world. And how do I know that? Well, what I did was I took genetic data from modern people, and I said, okay, how many people do I need to capture X percent of the diversity? And if I had a bunch of people that were closer related or distant related, how much genetic diversity would be captured? And I published this in the Journal of Creation. There'll be a link to this in the show notes. And what I discovered was that, yeah, the flood scenario, we would actually capture most of the genetic diversity. So we don't lose a bunch. It's not like everyone becomes completely inbred very quickly. And because we don't have a giant mutation load before this, it's not like we're going to um, breed ourselves into non-existence through mutation. So the Adam and Eve story, the Noah's flood story actually works. And I'm going to break because I've got another subject that I want to talk about. I want to split it into a second episode because I think it's going to take me a long time to talk. So if you carry on to the next episode, you'll probably see me standing right here and I'm going to be talking about a different subject. But that's all for this little snippet. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're encouraged. Hey, I can't do this without your fans and I really appreciate you. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your time. This is Dr. C signing off from the Nantahala River in Western North Carolina. Have a great day.